You're entering the future ready CNBC TV 18 EBIX Cash Studio. Right, uh, before the break, we spoke about property, we spoke about jewelry, but I think what people love the most are holidays. So we're going to talk about that now. Mahindra Holidays posted a weak set of Q3 earnings. The profit after tax has tanked around 80% on a sequential basis. Vacation ownership cost has declined, but resort income has surged 55% for the company. Of course, things are evolving. We had three COVID waves that hit this sector hard. But now, looks like the worst of the COVID situation is behind us. Kavinder Singh, the MD and CEO of Mahindra Holidays and Resorts, joins us now. Mr. Singh, good morning. Uh, it's really been a challenging last two years for the sector, has it not? And now, I think uh, it's trying to limp back to normalcy. But I assume that there could be, and correct me if I'm wrong, there could be a sharp V-shaped recovery in uh, the holiday season, in, in, the, in the bookings, because we're already noticing that across the board. Um, have you seen that as well? And if yes, what could your uh, you know, vacation ownership uh, data look like? Can you just share how much of the ownership you sold in this quarter? And uh, how does it compare quarter on quarter, year on year? And what is the expectation as we move along? All right. Uh, I think there are lots of questions uh, in one question, but let me start with the quarter performance. Just wanted to give your viewers uh, and all of you uh, a quick uh, run up to how this quarter went by. In fact, this was one of the best quarters that we saw at an operational level. We got an occupancy of 80 percent, and I'm talking of India operations here. Uh, even if I were to look at the income levels, income grew by about 16 percent on standalone basis and 30 and a half percent on consolidated basis. And if you look at our consolidated profits, uh, actually the PVT went up by three times uh, at the quarter three level. And if you look at, at the nine months level, our PVT is standing at about six times level. So there is a very significant uptick we saw uh, in the uh, uh, our resorts. We had 80% occupancies December, November. Despite the Omicron uh, wave that had started, we did not see any slowdown in our occupancies right up to December. Of course, January is a different story. I'll come there in a few seconds. But if you were to look at the overall metrics, even if you look at the margins, and by the way, I just want to compare it ourselves with the sequential uh, level. Even at a sequential level, there have been some one-offs which have been there in Q2 because we had got some lease rent waivers as a result of the Delta wave that happened in Q1. So if you were to remove that, even on a sequential basis, we are growing by about 10%. And if I were to do on a YOY basis, uh, I would like to compare ourselves with the pre-pandemic levels. Our profit before taxes up by 26%. Our margins are up by about 260 basis points. Uh, so all in all, uh, reaching pre-COVID levels in quarter three. Uh, if I were to look at the member additions, 13% growth, very healthy volume growth. And a value level, it's about 30% growth. Uh, we are looking forward uh, with lots of confidence into the future. You know what? Even in this quarter three, we improved our cash position from 1,041 crores to about 1,108 crores. Okay. We are a zero debt company. Right. Our model is very good. And as a result of which, you can see that we have our CapEx plans in full swing going. Okay. All right. Give us a few more numbers then, uh, Kavinder. You clearly had a good quarter. Now, at the nine-month mark, the total number of member additions is around 8,600-odd. Uh, what do you end this year with, if you could give us a rough number out there? And also, uh, you know, you told us about, uh, you know, I'm looking through your presentation, and your total room inventory is around uh, 4,356. What's the target? Where do you get that number to? So uh, as far as this quarter is concerned, we will definitely cross uh, 4,500 as we see. As you know that we have gone on record that we would like to be above 5,500 in about two to three years. And we are on track to do that. Uh, our investments in our own properties as well as leasing arrangements are in full swing. Uh, and you can see uh, the momentum. Even in this quarter, we added about 123 rooms. Our CapEx plans of about 1,000 to 1,200 crores are intact and uh, we don't need to borrow to do this and uh, at this point of time we have three projects which are running so uh, we are we are quite good in terms of the increasing our room count as far as member additions go which was your first question yes uh, there has been a problem that came in in the quarter one and a bit in december when the omicron wave came in when it comes to selling vacation ownerships january has been 
all right. I wouldn't say muted. It has been all right. Feb, March, by the way, March is a big month for us. So I think uh, if you were to look at our numbers, uh, which we delivered last year, we should definitely do better than last year. How much better? We will really know. Okay. Uh, Kavinder, good morning. You know, a good revenue stream for you is your ASF, right? Uh, annual uh, subscription fees. Uh, uh, but uh, has it dipped uh, in, in the last few months? Have people not paid uh, or delaying that decision? Uh, if you could give any numbers on that. Yeah. So, uh, annual fee is an important part of our business model because we do not charge the room uh, rates to anybody who once he becomes a member, he or, he or she becomes a member. So obviously annual fee is an important part for ensuring that we keep our resorts maintained and we are able to take care of our operating expenses. Um, as far as the annual fee collections are concerned, they have been robust in this quarter. In fact, they have grown on a YOY basis by 20%. That's a, that's a number we track internally. And uh, we have not seen any slippages happening as a result of uh, COVID. Yes, people have been delaying their plans. And sometimes people choose to pay later than earlier, which is fine, which can happen sometimes. But of course, there is a late fee associated with that. So it is always preferable to pay your annual fee in time and actually go on a holiday the moment you are able to go. Okay, the moment you are able to go is the operative phrase, right? Hopefully, we'll be going for a lot more holidays now. Things have opened up. But we've run out of time. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, Mr. Singh, and all the best. Uh, we hope this is the last of the problems that the sector has faced. It's really been a uh, troublesome time. Well, Dipan Mehta is still with us. Dipan, now, you know, this talk and this company, rather, ticks all the right boxes. A great promoter pedigree, a strong management, debt-free company, now in a space that is rising quite a bit. There could be, you know, big uh, revenge demand coming through here. Uh, would you buy Mahindra Holidays or would you stay away? First, the disclosure, we have been owning Mahindra Holidays for several years. And it's like a rocket which has never taken off. I mean, all the you said you said it all. You know, it checks all the boxes, but yet it just doesn't get the valuation or, or the outperformance, or has not really created value. And that remains one of the mysteries in this market. Why a stock of this pedigree has not performed well? Uh, one one reason could be that you know the acquisition which they did overseas that's just not playing out. So on a console basis. A lot of volatility in their earnings and on a console valuation basis it's not as attractive but yes i think you know on paper it looks like a great stock but it just hasn't done well maybe it's time will come just now post covid who knows okay yes uh, who knows uh, let's uh, do one thing deep and stay on uh, uh, let's discuss itc 